Hey guys, back here with Tua for another video. Update pup date time, week 41. If you're new to this channel, I do this style video every single Sunday on my bull mastiff Tua as he turns another week older, so he's 41 weeks today. And I do these videos not only for myself to look back on one day, but just to try to create a great log of information on the bull mastiff breed, basically sharing my experience um, and what I'm going through with the bull mastiff breed with all of you to, uh, like I said, hopefully create a great log of information for anybody that might be interested in the breed and uh, possibly getting one. Basically just breaking down, you know, what I'm going through week by week and what you could potentially expect and experience if you ended up getting a bull mastiff. And if he turns out to be a great dog, which so far he has been, you'll kind of be able to see what uh, I did from puppyhood on up to shape and mold that dog that he um, is and eventually becomes. So hopefully it uh, is able to help somebody out and uh, give you a lot of good information that maybe you didn't have before. I usually like to start these videos out with uh, just some new stuff or just anything that I like to, that I think is noteworthy throughout the week. I used to make a lot of training videos and stuff when he was a younger puppy and I haven't touched on training in quite a long time now. Um, but to, to touch on that now, like going into getting a bull mastiff, I heard they were pretty difficult to train or at least could be. Um, they tended to be, you know, stubborn, um, a little bull headed, stuff like that. And I, I've definitely experienced that with Tua. But I can honestly say that I've been very impressed with how easy he's been to train um, from a very young puppy all the way up until, you know, where he is now. I'll go ahead and say that I am a very experienced dog owner and uh, pretty experienced with training dogs, kind of not like professionally in any way, shape or form. But uh, I've, I've grown up with dogs, had dogs all my life, so I'm used to training them. Been in a lot of obedience classes and stuff with dogs growing up. So I kind of know what I'm doing, but uh, I've been very impressed with how easy he's been to train. Uh, my dog before Tua was a Doberman Pinscher. Uh, they're very, very smart. They're known to be very trainable. And I can honestly say that Tua has been, you know, maybe not quite as easy as training my Doberman, but definitely close. I mean, he's done everything I've asked him to do with relative ease. He's caught on extremely quick with, you know, all the basic commands. I don't ask him to be any sort of like agility dog and kind of crazy commands or anything, but all the basics. Uh, he's caught on really quick, so maybe I got lucky, um, or maybe this is more of a breed standard thing, but if I remember right, going into looking into getting a bull mastiff, that's what I always heard is they're kind of difficult to train. And maybe he'll get worse as he gets older too with stubbornness, but up to this point, uh, he's been great. Shedding is another thing I want to just touch on. Uh, I've had a couple people asking about that over the last couple weeks, and I do touch on that periodically. Um, not, not real often, but uh, to this point, his shedding hasn't really been much of an issue. Hasn't been a huge shedder. I do brush him, I would say, weekly. A good, you know, five or ten minutes uh, once a week, and I don't really notice... Uh, the shedding. I definitely don't notice it around our house or anything, but if I miss a week of brushing or if it's kind of towards where it's been towards the end of that week and I haven't brushed him, if he's like laying on me or something, I'll definitely notice hair on my clothes. Um, but it hasn't been like really intense shedding, so we'll see where that ends up as he gets older and during shedding seasons and stuff, obviously, that dogs go through. But to this point, I wouldn't say it's like bad shedding, like not comparable to like a Labrador or anything like that. In my experience, as of right now at least. Um, I will say after a bath though, it's very intense shedding for probably a day, maybe two right after a bath. But that's typical with most shedding dogs because when you're giving them a bath, you're really rubbing down their coat, you're scrubbing them, and all those hairs get loose and end up coming out. But now I'll go ahead and touch on some of the stuff that I touch on every single week, starting with weight. So last week he weighed in at 114 pounds. This week he's 118 pounds, so he's up four. And uh, that's the most that he's gained in a while. He's been kind of one, two, three pound weeks here for 
I guess I don't remember how long, but it's been a while since he's gained four pounds in a week, so that's quite the jump. And I will say that I'm, I'm definitely noticing that he's filling out more now. Um, in the past, I've kept saying, you know, he's so skinny, and uh, he definitely is. I can still see his ribs and everything. You can still see all the muscles in his legs and his body and stuff like that. But he is starting to slowly, noticeably fill out, especially if I look, you know, at pictures and videos and stuff week by week. So it, it makes sense to me that he did put on four pounds. Not too surprised with that. Definitely filling out now. Uh, his dad was about 150, so we'll see how close he can get to that. But just at the rate that he's going, I would anticipate that he'll, you know, touch that. But we'll, we'll see as time goes on, and I'll be here to document it week by week. Food is another thing that I touch on every single week. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you know that I supplement with a uh, raw food diet. And that just consists of raw meat, uh, vegetables, fruit, stuff like that. This week I did chicken breast, chicken feet, and carrots. And basically what I'm doing right now is I'm at about a 60-40 split with 60% of that being kibble. And 40% of that being that raw diet. Uh, this is the first time that I've, not the first time that I've given him chicken feet, but the first time that I've given him whole chicken feet. I've generally been cutting them up and giving them to him. So I, I tried this week. I, I was always concerned about a choking hazard with those because he tends to eat his food pretty quickly. Um, I tried this week giving him a whole chicken foot just mixed in with his kibble and he did eat it and it did go fine, but he seemed to kind of not be chewing it up as much as I would have liked him to. And uh, cause he really likes to scarf his food down quickly as most dogs do. And uh, it just seemed like it could still kind of be a potential choking hazard. So what I decided to start doing is just give him his regular food um, with his regular, you know, raw food that I've kind of cut up and put on top and then give him a chicken foot afterwards once he's outside and kind of been go going to the bathroom and stuff. And then he really chews that up nice. So that seems to be working well for me. And I think I'll continue doing that until uh, I feel like he's maybe more ready, slowing down on that eating. Socialization is another thing that I touch on every single week. Um, it wasn't really a great week for it. We just got him on a couple of walks. Uh, didn't really see any more people or dogs out there on those walks. But last week was such a good week for it. Um, I touched on it in the last vi video. My wife and I both had our fantasy football drafts where we have lots of people and friends and stuff come over. And they were all new to Tua. He met probably 20 new people last week and he did great with all of them. Um, he had some initial excitement when those people came into the house, but after that initial excitement, he just kind of acted like he'd known all those people his whole life. So I've been really impressed with how great he has been with people up to this point. But like I keep saying in all these videos also, um, we've put in a lot of time and effort to make sure he's been properly socialized, met tons of people and dogs from basically the day that we brought him home. Um, and all that time and effort's paying off. He's, he's doing great with people. Drooling is another thing that I touch on every single week. So most of his drooling is around food and water related type things when he's eating or drinking. I'd say 90% of it. Um, another time where he'll drool kind of consistently is if it's very hot out and he's panting. He'll get some drool built up, you know, along his jowls and stuff. But when he's just lounging around the house and things like that, he's not a drooler at all. It, there basically needs to be some sort of physical activity or some sort of food water related stuff going on. Sometimes if he's chewing on a bone or something like that, he'll get some drool built up, but not like overkill or anything. I know drooling is a big thing that people think about when they get a bull mastiff. And I'll say that it hasn't been a big deal to me, but I am noticing, you know, how messy it can get around meal time. So I kind of want to talk about that just for a second. This week was the first week that it kind of, it stood out to me that you know, drooling is is different with this breed because at least for me, um, like we have water out all the time for him to just go ahead and drink whenever he wants. And I'm finding myself like if I'm sitting on the couch or something and I see him get up and I can hear him drinking his water and I'm getting up off the couch to go get a rig or a paper towel or something, knowing that when he walks away from that water bowl, he's going to be dripping drool all over in his path wherever he walks after that. So I will say that, you know, it is sort of an issue. It's not a big deal to me to go ahead and do that, but it's, uh, 
it's not typical with you know a different breed of dog that has no drooling whatsoever and your dog goes to his water bowl and you don't have to get up off the couch because you don't want there to be a trail of drool because you know like with our miniature pincher for example she just goes and gets water and that's all there is to it i don't have to worry about it where with tua now i i don't want there to be a trail of drool behind him as he walks away from his water bowl so now i'm getting up and going and uh, cleaning up that mess so to speak or cleaning up the mess before it happens basically um, so a little bit more work with that um, and you wouldn't necessarily have to get up and and wipe his mouth before I'm I just tend to like not want the drool on the floor I guess but uh, just something to kind of make note of something to think about but overall other than like that type of situation drooling to me has been a non-issue you know whatsoever um, like I said, just lounging around the house and stuff. He's not a drooler. He's got to be doing physical activity or drinking water or eating food. Energy is another thing that I touch on every single week. Um, still staying consistent with where these, you know, last five, six, seven, eight videos have been. It's, it's down overall. He does have his times during the day where he has, you know, energy spurts. And that's usually like kind of right away in the morning after he's eaten his breakfast. And then for a few hours at night. Other than that, he'll sleep the day away for the most part. Um, pretty lazy overall to this point. Uh, he did have, you know, a time when he was more of a puppy than he is now where he definitely had a lot of energy. A lot for a bull mastiff anyway. Not like, you know, like my previous dog who was a Doberman like I talked about. Nothing like that. But for, for him, you know, it was up. But uh, overall, he's, he's definitely turning into that breed standard of being a little bit more on the lazier side. But like I mentioned last week, at the same time, it's not like he'll turn down going for a walk or anything like that or going in the backyard to play. He's never like not wanted to go do physical activity to this point. Just a little bit more on the lazier side. Barking is the last thing that I touch on every single week. Um, same as all the other videos, he's not much of a barker, just in a few different uh, situations. If he's playing with another dog and, you know, they're all they're both fired up. He'll be barking at the other dog, mainly with our miniature pincher. He likes to play with her and bark at her. And the only other situation really is if he's kind of in a, like a guarding mode and his guarding instincts will kick in. If he's in our yard or in our house and, uh, you know, he'll hear a sound or something. Somebody's in the backyard next to us and he can't really see what's going on. He'll let out some barks until he can kind of see what's going on. But nothing too intense. It's not like he just sits out in the yard and barks for hours on end like uh, a lot of other dogs. And that's kind of typical to the breed too. They're, they're not known to be huge barkers, uh, just kind of when they need to be. But other than that guys, that's all I have for the week. As usual, go ahead and let me know if there's anything that you'd like me to touch on other than the stuff that I already do. Other than that, thanks for watching. Have a good one guys.